Hey everybody, this is Josh Runquist here for the Heavy Briefings YouTube channel to bring you an extra special version of Out Today and What I Missed for August 2nd, 2024. It's very special not just because I have 10 new albums, 3 out today, 7 I've missed along the way, but it is also the 13th anniversary since I started doing everything that I do in the music career. From my original days of That Drummer Guy and now during Heavy Briefings, whether this is the first video you've ever checked out or if you've checked out any of the 920 25 interviews that I've done. Thank you so very, very much. Let's begin. First up, we have the sophomore album from Fourth Dominion with Diana's Day. This Rochester, New York band really combines the best elements of goth rock, post-punk, and a little bit of new wave of British heavy metal thrown in there. I hear as much anathema and sentenced in this band as I do, say, a band like Publicis UK or The Smiths or even Hole. This is a very fascinating but dark look at mental health, trauma, and the cathartic ways that we deal with all those things. It really really does explore trauma in a way that I wish more bands would do, but I'm so thankful that 4th Dominion does that for us. Add that with some excellent production and songwriting value, and you have something that is metal adjacent, and not necessarily the heaviest thing you'll hear all year, but it is very, very heavy thematically. And if you're looking for something like that, you should give this album a shot. Up next is the sophomore album from The Mantle with Violent Cosmic Fortune. And this is one of the best progressive death metal albums of 2024, if not the best, and one of my favorite albums of 2024 so far. Max Gorlick, Asher Bank, and Sky Moon have put out one of the best progressive death metal albums I've heard in a very, very long time. If you were originally familiar with the band, you know they started off as an instrumental duo. Now the band is a progressive death metal trio, and it's the best thing that they could have done. I hear elements of the glory days of Opeth and the more progressive and experimental sides of Edge of Sanity. If that's something you're looking for, you are going to love this album. And of course, layer all of that on top with the absolutely amazing chops that all three of these guys bring. There's a lot of shredding, a lot of wanking, but I wouldn't have it any other way. This is some fantastic stuff from the mantle, and if you want to hear the best progressive death metal of 2024, at least so far, give this one a shot. Up next is the third album from Mr. Misery with their self-titled album. And this is my first foray into the band, and I really, really enjoy what they're doing here. Everything from horror metal, modern metal, metalcore, glam, and so much more is thrown into here. This is the most modern metal the band has done so far, but I really, really enjoy what they're doing here. The production is pristine, the songwriting is catchy, and they know how to trim the fat. It's everything that you could be looking for in this particular style. With that great vampiric thematic sound over top of it and if you're just looking for something that's fun catchy and incorporate so much of the modern day while still be able to doing a little bit of a throwback you should check out mr misery and first up for what I missed is A Day in Venice with A Man Without a Name. The fourth album from this Italian band really explores goth rock and post rock and alternative rock, although not like Fourth Dominion, which I talked about earlier in my reviews, but this has more of a mix of something like The Gathering, mixed in with some 80s synth and soundtrack kind of feel, and some very dark charm on top of all of it. It's a bit of an uneasy listening experience, but I do believe that was done by design. The production is very raw, especially in the guitar, which kind of almost has nearly a black metal guitar tone to it, thrown on top of some goth rock and post-punk on top of that. It's not going to be for everybody, but if you want something that sounds like the early day albums from The Gathering mixed in with some 80s flair, you should give this one a shot. Next up, we have the self-titled debut from Category 7. This brand new group features past and present members of Adrenaline Mob, Armored Saint, Exodus, Overkill, and more. And I thoroughly enjoy everything that's going on with this album. It has the right amount of old school thrash. It has the right amount of modern metal. It has the right amount of everything that I'm looking for in their sound. Yeah, 80s thrash, 90s groove, some modern metal techniques, all while sounding absolutely authentic. And you can't tell me after 40 plus years, John Bush still isn't one of the best singers to come out of the 80s. 
The man can sing a chorus like no other. And I'm so excited this album came to fruition, and it makes me so excited to see what the band is going to be all about with their sophomore album. But until then, check out the self-titled debut from Category 7 if you want something that has that thrash groove modern feel. Next up is Curse Upon a Prayer with The Worship, Orthoprax Satanism. And this is another recommendation from Justin of the Harsh Vocals Podcast. Thank you very, very much, and make sure to check out that podcast for the more extreme side of things. But until then, Curse Upon a Prayer does the perfect mix of satanic black metal while making it so soothing and melodic at the same time. It feels like a succubus that's kind of luring you in if you like a particular style of black metal, before they drag you down to the underworld. The production is very smooth and pristine, especially for the style. And of course, the lyrical content just fits like a glove. It's not going to be the most technical or brutal album that you hear in 2024. This is just some really smooth satanic black metal. And if you're looking for something that feels like more of a mainstream version of the Antichrist Imperium, you should give this one a proper listen and see if it's for you. Next up, we have Power Wolf with Wake Up the Wicked. And what can I say? Power Wolf is gonna Power Wolf at this point. And they don't need to do anything else. They found their niche and they do it so very, very well. It's that gothic tinged power metal that has those really dark religious overtones to it. You know, like werewolves acting as religious figures, as they've often done with Power Wolf. That's who they are, it's what they do, and no one does it better. With a killer production style, and of course that songwriting that is so pet it to them. This is everything that you want in a Power Wolf album. If you're looking for them to do a pop album or a grindcore album, this isn't going to be for you. But if you just want to know that something's safe in the world and Power Wolf is still putting out the great solid stuff that they do, check out Wake Up For The Wicked. If you want that, you won't be disappointed. Next up is the one-man project Rot with Enchantment. And coming straight out of India, this is some of the best black gaze post-black metal that I've heard all year. I dare say, this is the black gaze post-black metal album of the year. All you have to do is listen to it. The songs are filled with such emotion that it really feels like an odd mix of getting your heartstrings pulled and your gut punched at the same time. Because those melodic moments are so intriguing, but it also hits you so hard with the production, and especially Especially the lyrical style that's going on at the same time. This is what I love about the genre and the perfect example of how to get someone into black gaze or post black metal. If this sounds like it's for you and if you want to hear the best of this genre, give the brand new album from Rot a proper listen. Up next is Solstium with their debut album, Morgoth, and this is straight up for me. It is Death Doom and Epic Metal combined. If you're looking for something that wants to be combined with November's Doom, Candlemass, and even some Bolt Thrower thrown in, you need to check out this album. It has that perfect, raw 90s feel of Death Doom. But it also has the songwriting style of something like Bolt Thrower, where it feels like it's not too fast, not too slow, just right in the middle. And then when they get into the more epic metal side, you really hear the Candlemass influence on top of that. And of course, the death doom of it all with November's Doom. I can't speak enough good things about this. It's a little bit raw for some people, but I think you can overlook that with, the with everything that's going on in the songwriting. And if it sounds intriguing to you at all, Go check it out right now. And finally today, we have Tears of Tragedy with Wonder Arts. And this is the most symphonic power metal, melodic power metal album that you're probably going to hear in 2024. In a time where it feels like every symphonic power metal band is trying to be Amaranth, Tears of Tragedy is going more in the Versailles route, which really fits them so very, very well. It's got the over-the-top symphonics, it's got that pure power metal sound, and it's super melodic. You write that with some fantastic songwriting, Writing, and a production style that fits so perfectly for the sound and really feels like a gut punch to the system. It's everything that you want for it. It feels dark. It feels tragic. No pun intended. It's just everything that you want in this sound. If you love Versailles, you're gonna love Tears of Tragedy. Trust me on this one.
And there you go, folks, another 10 albums down and 300 albums I've covered since January 2024. So what do you think? Did I pick out some good albums? Did I pick out some bad albums? Anything that captures your interest? Or do I just have a terrible taste in music? Let me know all of that down below. And of course, like, comment, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And one last time, thank you so very much for checking out this video or anything else I've ever done under the That Drummer Guy banner or Heavy Debriefings banner. I can't believe I'm celebrating 13 years of doing this, especially when I didn't think I was going to last a day. And I have all of you to thank you for continuing to have my drive and continue forward with everything I'm doing. So here's to the next 13 years. And until next, next week when we cover August 9th, 2024 for Out Today and What I Missed, this is Josh Runquist for the Heavy Debriefings YouTube channel saying embrace the skillet.